Hello, welcome to episode 22 of the Two Button Crew podcast. We are back this time to talk about Animal Crossing New Horizons, the latest sensation on Switch. I'm Scott, joined by Ryan. How are you doing? Perfect. And Glenn. Glenn, can you top that? What? Who's Ryan? I wasn't informed of this. (laughs) I'm alive. Somehow, I made it. Hey, good job. Well, if anything could bring you back from the dead, it'd be Animal Crossing, right? Mm Mm-hmm. This is pretty much your thing. Yep. I mean, you're a big fan in general of things that are good and exciting, but I think Animal Crossing holds a special spot in your heart. Am I wrong? No, you are correct. I'm not as crazy as some people about Animal Crossing. I do tend to like dip off after a certain point. I'm not someone that will play forever until the next one comes out. But yes, I very much enjoy the series, and when the new game drops, I go all in on it. So you're you're not a grandma who spends like 2,000 hours uh, in the game. <laughs> that I am not. And you didn't just nope. put down New Leaf and put your 3DS in storage? No. I, my 3DS has honestly been out on my nightstand for a while. I just haven't picked it up in a long time. So. Oh, wow. All right. Glenn, Animal Crossing in general, what's your take? Uh, so I play. I rented uh, a couple of times the first one on the GameCube, but um, I, I just never went back after that. Um, and it's not that I didn't have a, an interest. Like, I'd see it in Nintendo Power, I'd read the articles, and I'm like, oh, hey, that's pretty cool. But there was, you know, it's just one of those things that there was always something um, something else to, to take my interest. So you and, went from playing the GameCube one to this one? Yeah. I wow. So there, there's like, what, 15 years, a 15-year gap there for me, so. At least. Um, and it's weird because I hear that there are a lot of features in the, the uh, GameCube one that just never came back. So it is kind of also strange because for me, it's it's not like this continuous progression. It's like, oh, there's a lot of really cool new stuff, but there's also some stuff that just I remember from the original game that I like that's just not here. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I played the GameCube one primarily. At one time, I bought it for my sister who did not own a GameCube. And I bought it for her for Christmas, like two weeks in advance, and the copy was used. So I figured, hey, I've got this Animal Crossing game with the case open sitting around. I might as well play it. And then, so I fell in love with it, gave it to her on Christmas, and she's like, oh, thank you. I don't have a GameCube. You can keep it. So I think that plan went beautifully. (laughs) So every year since you've gotten her a game for a system (laughs) she doesn't own for Christmas? I should. That'd be a great tradition. But... (laughs) I also played the Wild World entry on DS. I skipped New Leaf, and now I'm on New Horizons. And I also skipped all the spinoffs and things like that. What about City Folk on the the Wii? City Folk I bought, but for some reason didn't play it very much. And if I remember right, I think that one was very much a copy and paste of the DS game with a few added things. Is that right, Ryan? Yeah, it is absolutely correct. So that must be why I never really dived in, because it's hard to start over, especially if it's so it similar is. to the previous game. Yep, that's City Folk is the the one that I got into the least for that same exact reason. It's so strange. It's just, it was too similar to Wild World. You could even take your character from Wild World and import them into City Folk. So. Wow. But Wild World and New Leaf were so much more convenient than a console entry because Animal Crossing is one of those games you want to pick up for 15 minutes a day, and that was a lot less convenient to do on Wii. So right, I also right. had that against it. Okay, so Glenn, what made you decide to jump back into the series this time around? Uh, this game looks more like a game. Uh, from okay. all the coverage I saw from it, it's like, oh, there's there's crafting, you're going to be exploring an island, and you're going to kind of be building it up and um, actually, you know, customizing the island itself. You know, the original Animal Crossing, I think it, it appealed to me as a kid because it was just sort of this virtual space that you could run around and do stuff in. Um, but, you know, as an adult, I'm much more uh, goal-oriented, much more objective-driven, so... Uh, it looks like, oh, hey, there's actually going to be sort of a um, a progression here as opposed to just 
uh, being plopped into a town and given a fishing rod and told, okay, you know, you can fill the museum if you want. Mm. Which and, in any other game would be a side quest, but in Animal Crossing, it's also a side quest because there is no main quest in Animal Crossing. When were you really sold? <laughs> like the Animal Crossing Direct? I guess. I, I don't really recall when I was sold. Well, I'll, I'll level with you. I actually, uh, I was right up until I bought it. I was waffling on whether or not I wanted to, I, I was getting cold feet. So it's one of those things where it's like, hmm, I might try this out. And that's like what I was saying right up until I bought it. It's like, I might try this out. You know, I'm walking to the register with it. Well, not not literally because I bought it at Walmart and they don't let you actually hold the game until you've paid for it. But Yeah. <laughs> and Ryan, you decided to go digital on this one. So it's always at the ready, right? Yes. that's. I did the same thing with New Leaf. But... Unfortunately, New Leaf, I switched my 3DSs at one point, and all my save files were fine except for my New Leaf save file, which got corrupted during the transfer, so everything got deleted, and that's when I stopped playing New Leaf. Oh, wow. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can relate. I have a GameCube memory card that does that. This game is kind of at risk, too, because I don't think it works with cloud backups. I think Nintendo said that they will help you one time with some shady back alley black magic to get your island back if you lose it, but it's just like a kind of manual process. Right, yeah. Um, it does work with system transfers, though. Okay, nice. Well, we've spent at least a month with this game, and I've played it most mm -hmm. days. I think all of us have, so we're going to dive in, talk about each and every aspect of the gameplay and what we like and don't like about New Horizons. So let's get into it. One of the most basic activities you do in the gameplay of New Horizons is just talking to villagers, or I should say that's one of the main things you should do, but I've probably talked to my villagers about five times. I think that they're all ugly and annoying, so I did not get a good roll of the dice with the people that moved onto my island at all. Yeah, I got I got an anteater, so, or an anteater. aardvark. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You don't like that? Uh... You know, he's fine. Like, he's he's got the, I think, in, among the fans, it's called the jock personality. So uh -huh. it is kind of charming where, you know, just like, it's like, I did an exercise for my eyebrows. And it's like, okay, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you keep being you, man. <laughs> I'm going to well, be I'm, over there. I'm pretty sure everybody who plays this game gets a jock stereotype because yep. they rationalize, like, who are the type of people that would be up for moving to a deserted island? And for whatever reason, one of the people was a jock. So there's that. And then what's the other person that always comes with the island? Do you know? hmm. I, I want to know. I, had, I, I, I want to say it's cute or yeah. something. It's, I, don't, I don't know. It's kind of, it's more of, it's not a neutral, but it's more of a neutral, like a happy go lucky sort of person. Right. I know one of the residents that moved in uh, after like in the second wave of Resonance uh, was definitely cute. And it's this cute little like pink hamster. And I, I remember, and I also got one called like, I think his name was Big Top and he's obsessed with eating. And I remember just looking at the cute little hamster and it's like, Big Top's going to eat you alive the second things go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Ryan, do you like your villagers? Do you talk to them very much? Uh, Most of my villagers are good. Actually, the... Last one that I really hated moved out today, so okay, nice. <laughs> and so I got that going for me. There's a few that like if they decide to move out, I'll be like, all right, see you later. Yeah. But there's there's none that I particularly like despise anymore. So hopefully I can get a good replacement. I'm gonna try and go to a couple of islands and see if I can get someone good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I enjoy talking to the more staple non-playable characters that are on every island a lot more than my villagers for some reason. I just think that. I don't know. The algorithm isn't really working for me, and I I know. Well, there's that... four personalities per gender, um, okay. so uh, that's not a lot. <laughs> so you're yeah. probably going to see some repeat dialogue. Right. Yeah, and also they all have very shallow hooks. Like I said, Big Top is obsessed with eating. Mm -hmm. um, there's that one dude who's just obsessed with working out, and then the other ones are there. 
I yeah. think that's their gimmick is that they're present. <laughs> <laughs> One thing physically, not not was... mentally or spiritually. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that made me laugh was I picked up a lost journal and I was trying to find out who it went to. You would think I could just open up the first page and see who it was, but I couldn't. That would so be an invasion think... of privacy, Scott. Well, I suppose. But I tried handing it to someone and they're like, no, this belongs to Tammy. And I'm like, hold on, you are Tammy. But then I looked and they were spelled differently. So I had a Tammy with a Y and a Tammy with an I. And I just, I had two Tammies. They're both ugly. They're both like the same garish yellow and purple color palette. And I'm like, come on. I felt like Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec. He has two ex wife Tammies. Say that. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't he have three ex wife Tammies and then he dates another girl named Tammy? I, I don't know. Yeah, There's a lot of Tammies. I think so. I'm like, this is absurd. Sounds kind of like a strong family reunion with all the Glens they have. Yeah. <laughs> Glenn, Glenner, and Glennist, as they say. <laughs> I, I, you're the only one who said Glennist so far. <laughs> yep, as they say. Well, okay, so that doesn't sound like it's sticking too well for us. Yeah. How about well? Uh, one thing I will say is I do like the fact that if you talk to people enough, that you can like give them presents, and then you can eventually like convince them to dress in a certain way. So if you want everyone to like have a uniform <laughs> my, my goal I, I mentioned this before like in a uh, tbc direct or something my goal is to set up a military junta um <laughs> <laughs> so and army fatigues are an outfit in the game wow so mm-hmm. it, it's perfect for me in that regard well you can design your own uniform too and put it in the shop and then your villagers will sometimes wear the stuff that you design so you can really? get like USSR uniforms and have them on. <laughs> I, I haven't uh, I, I haven't unlocked the clothing shop yet. Uh, so I'll okay. I'll have to look into that. Are you taking mm-hmm. the story slowly, Glenn? Uh yeah, kind of. I'm I'm not playing every day because I'm a busy uh, guy with um, writing blog articles that nobody reads and I'm yeah. um, trying to make a game in my spare time and playing, uh, trying to work on my backlog as well. So, And playing well, Ring Fit Adventure. People, you, know, you can't buy it now because it's pretty much sold out. But when, once uh, stock gets back in, seriously, if you want to get more exercise, check that out. It's good. Yeah, it's the only thing that can convince me to exercise. But hey, <laughs> since I proof your blocks, you have at least one reader. So there's always that. That's true. How about collecting, <laughs> though? That's a major part of Animal Crossing. We got, of course, bugs, fish, fossils, and now with the newest update, they've added paintings, which you can mm-hmm. buy, but you have to be careful not to get a fake. And It's actually really easy to avoid. Okay, tell me how it works. I haven't tried it yet. <clears throat> so they're all based off of actual paintings. Mm-hmm. So when you go into a shop, if you like pull up pictures of the actual paintings or sculptures, you can find the one thing that's off in the said picture or statue Mm -hmm. and then be like oh well that's a fake uh, it's like that Mm slylock fox spot the differences thing huh yeah pretty much so uh, how did it's being sold to you by a fox huh that's right yes Mm -hmm. what about back in the gamecube days when we had dial-up and no smartphones for easy art googling i don't remember how i did yeah i don't don't know how to yeah i don't know well then you just go out and you buy a book (laughs) i guess a guide yeah Mm -hmm. oh no not a guide a, a book on art I had an Animal Crossing mm. guide for GameCube. It was awesome. Here you go. Maybe that's how you did it. So you, I'm you, enjoying... you had that much trouble winning at Animal Crossing? Winning? <laughs> <laughs> uh, guides guides were almost more about collecting than actually usefulness at some points. But it's They true. had codes. You could get pretty much any item from Nook by mm. typing in the right code. Because that's how that's we true. used to do trading back in the GameCube days. You would say, I want to send this to my friend. They would give you a code, and your item would disappear. And they would type in the item... But of course, there was no internet connection, so it was just like right. uh, an identifier. And it, yeah, and you had you, to like plug in the memory card and all that, right? No, not for this one. Oh, okay. So it was like when you get a game over and you have like the randomly generated code mm-hmm. that for your run. It's basically that, except when you input the item, it takes the item away from you, and then when someone else inputs the item code, then they get that item. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's just kind of creating like a, a it's like a hash function or something. Yeah, exactly. So those could all be put in a cheat book. But anyway, back to New Horizons. I feel like the museum is very strong in this game. Uh, mm-hmm. The layout is good from what I hear. I actually made a pledge not to check out any of the wings of the museum until they're completely finished. 
So wow. all I'm doing is going in there and talking to the owl and leaving. But with that and the Critterpedia, I think that catching bugs and fish has been really fun. And I think fossils might be one of my favorite daily chores because yeah. just go out there, find a fossil, and either the museum has it or it doesn't. If it doesn't, you can sell it. So it's like mm-hmm. one of the most simple gratifying things to do yeah I, I love how timmy and tommy will pay you like a couple thousand uh bells for it which since one bell is roughly equivalent to a cent um mm-hmm. it's like hey i found this triceratops skull i'll give you 20 <laughs> bucks for it <laughs> sure what a bargain <laughs> yeah <laughs> so overall thoughts on bugs fish fossils yeah i like that once you catch the the critter once it shows you like when they show up and Mm -hmm. all that jazz plus you get the little uh, icon next to it that shows whether or not you've donated something which is insanely helpful yeah there's actually an even faster shortcut i don't know if you've ever noticed but the first time you catch something your character says yes yep i did notice that so i did not (laughs) yeah that saves me from going into the critterpedia of course you can't be mashing through the dialogue boxes too fast but well, you can't do that in general just because it, the dialogue menus don't like properly fast forward like every other game, but we'll get to that in a yeah. moment. <laughs> yeah. Plus, if you just like forget if you donated something or not, if you have like w- if you just go out and catch a bunch of things at once, you can just go to the museum because they'll just be highlighted or not highlighted depending on whether or not you've donated them already. Right. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I will say that this is one area that bummed me out early on because now with the real-time mechanics and everything there are certain critters that come and go with the seasons and the game came out in march there are already fish that were leaving in march and a couple rare ones at that so you wouldn't know this without looking at a guide but you can look at a guide and see okay how many days do i have to catch these things what times do they appear and where are they at and I was trying to catch a sturgeon and a stringfish. So the sturgeon was down at where the river meets the mouth of the ocean. I got that one finally. And then the stringfish was, the guide said that they are at the top level waterfall, or no, they're in the top level pond. But all of the guides said, but I caught it actually in the waterfall below the top level. And so many of them said that, that I started to wonder, is the stringfish even in the top pond or is it just at the waterfall? the highest waterfall it's any, uh anything that says like it says like cliff top yeah. is what it's called considered but that's anything above the base level oh, okay because you have you have one level and then there's the second level and the third that means it'll be on two or three okay thank you but mm-hmm. unfortunately i never caught the string fish and i tried for hours mm. i stayed up late on the last night of march i dug so many manila clams talked about how <laughs> it was my favorite flavor of clam took it to craft some fish bait and went through probably a hundred fish bait and never caught it. So then the string fish went away until like December, which kind of, to be honest, dampened my entire experience of animal crossing because my goal, you, you kind of pick your own goals in this game because you could try to collect every piece of furniture. You could try to have all the best, most rare villagers you kind of pick and choose what you want to do and catching all the bugs and fish and filling out the museum was my idea of playing and enjoying animal crossing. And just to think that I won't be able to catch that until six months from now. It's pretty sad Mm -hmm. to be fair though. And at least I'm pretty sure there's other fish that probably won't show up until December anyway. So yeah, I don't know if you'd be able to complete it before then. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely need to know what you're doing when you're going fishing and all of that. So it's it's very helpful to have an online guide because I've been trying to catch a snapping turtle. I only recently find out found out that you have to like, they only appear after nine o'clock. Yeah, which is weird because I could have sworn I saw footage of someone um, capturing a snapping turtle in broad daylight, but huh. um, nine p.m. I should have specified. But yeah, uh, gosh darn it, I want a snapping turtle so bad. <laughs> that thing is just gonna, amazing 
donate them or put them in your house? Well, I have to donate the first one just out of the principle. But the second one, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm definitely going to keep them. I'm going to give them like a little food bowl and all of that. Um, I'm not sure what I want to name him. I'm kind of torn between Brutus and uh, Percival. <laughs> they need to have breeding. Because what if you could catch two, put them in your basement, and come back? Then you have a little baby one to take to the museum. Hmm. <laughs> There's an idea. I mean, they kind of have that with flowers already. So Right. I think that'll be in a future Animal Crossing. Mark my words. Good thing we're recording this. Okay. Any other mm -hmm. thoughts on critters? And um, so some of your villagers are frogs, but you can catch frogs in ponds and tadpoles. That's a whole weird thing. I've got cat food bowls and like a cat tower for one to climb, but I'm not sure if that's supposed to be one of my neighbors or a pet. Invite them over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so, <laughs> hey, hey, buddy, you want to buy some catnip? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. I will say, too, I don't know if it's available for Android, but I know for iOS there's an app called ACNH Guide, mm. and it shows you all of the bugs and all the fish that are available that month, and you can put input whether or not you've caught and donated them, and it shows you, like, what times, where to catch everything, and oh, nice. you know, all that fun stuff. It's very useful. ACNH guide, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that would be super helpful. And it's free, so. If it's on iOS, I would assume Android as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, if it's an officially supported app, then, yeah, it would be. It's but not. Yeah, it's it's a fan thing, so it's always, like, that. that's always a, a roll of the die. Mm-hmm. Okay, how about the progression in this game? Quite a few new things were introduced the mm -hmm. the whole tool issue nintendo got great feedback on breakable weapons in breath of the wild so they decided to put that into this game and <laughs> along with that came diy well, can, recipes can your tools break in the original animal crossing because i remember um banging rocks with my axe and it cracking or no the axe the shovel cracked the axe got like wobbly bent no that the axe is the only thing that broke in the original oh okay huh but you got golden tools for all of them, and they were all better, right? So there were certain advantages to having golden tools? Yes. Yeah. So such as, like, the fishing line, it would you'd have longer to press the button before the tr fish would try and get away, so the rarer fish were much easier to catch. Same with the the bug net was actually larger. The golden net was wow. larger, so you, your surface area was... But you didn't get any of those until you caught all the fish or bugs. Huh. So. Well, thank goodness for your memory, Ryan. That's good. But yeah, it's, they're so flimsy in this game. They, and along with that comes DIY recipes, and apparently instructions are called recipes now, so that's cool. Yeah, that, that bothered me too. It's like, isn't that a schematic or a blueprint? Why is it called a recipe? <laughs> it, it's strange. It's probably from Pinterest or something. We don't know. No, uh, it's one of those things where it's like, because a blueprint like is a, is a diagram of how everything fits together, I, I think it's because in video game terminology, that's just what we started calling it. And so that's yeah. what it made it into the game, even though um, in terms of like the context of the world, it makes absolutely no sense. Hmm. But Glenn, you said that crafting was actually one thing that appealed to you and made you think about getting this game. So you like crafting? Um, yeah, because crafting introduces a progression element because it's like, oh, I want a better tool. That means I need to get better resources. That means I need to go explore new areas. Um, yeah. And there are, um, it, it doesn't quite work that way in Animal Crossing. Like there's definitely a progression to crafting, but I don't think there's anything above like the standard metal um, tools until you get to like gold. And from what I understand, there isn't like a significant advantage to gold. It's just kind of a vanity thing in this game i think they take longer to break but they still break which bums me out yeah oh weird i thought those would be unbreakable you would think no they okay. still break and oh gosh see that just this is why i don't like the durability mechanic or at least how nintendo introduces it because it's like i get that putting that in like the early and mid game makes sense but there's a point where you get to the end where it's like no you've worked hard enough just 
do away with that. That's your reward. Like, that's a very yeah. fulfilling reward. And I guess Nintendo just doesn't want us to feel good about the progress we're making. Similar to the fully upgraded Master Sword. Still right. has to go offline for a while and recharge. And it's like, come on, I paid for this DLC. I got through all the trials. It's not even the strongest weapon. Why not just be able to use it indefinitely? But hmm. yeah, honestly, I you know it's the same thing. I have said this in um, about Breath of the Wild. Is Breath of the Wild the champion's weapons should have been unbreakable? They should have been mid tier unbreakable weapons. So they're because yep. that would fundamentally change the way you approach uh, weapons in that game. Okay, but, so this is a Nintendo trend of late that we're not into. Glad we can agree yeah. on that. I don't mind the breakable, but yeah, like yeah. After a certain point, it's like, I'm just trying to fish. I don't want my fishing pole to break. Like, mm-hmm. It's a bummer. <laughs> yeah, and I also don't like the fact that you can't buy the mid-tier tools. At least I haven't been able to do it yet. Maybe one of the store upgrades, but you know, I can only buy like the flimsy stuff, and then I have to upgrade it myself, which means I have to use the crafting menu. And Despite the fact that I like crafting individual items, I don't like having to craft the same thing over and over again, uh, mostly mm-hmm. because the crafting menu is terrible um because it only lets you craft one thing at a time yeah i also don't like having to carry every type of material all the time because there's already 10 tools in the game 10 different types of materials between what you get out of the rock what you get from trees what you pick up off the ground so that's like your entire inventory and you can upgrade it get 10 more slots get 10 more slots beyond that but i just feel like my pockets are always half full which is kind of annoying when yeah, they need to make. They should have made it where you can store all of your craftable materials inside the workbench. So any workbench you go to on your island will have all of your materials there. Yeah, yeah. And I seem to recall there's like one place in the game where it kind of I can't remember off the top of my head, but it actually yeah, the wardrobe. The wardrobe can pull clothing mm-hmm. out of storage. Mm-hmm. And it's like, right. why can't the crafting bench do that? Right. Hopefully, in some sort of future update, they'll change that, but. We'll see. Yeah, they could streamline a couple things for sure. Let you craft more manila clams at once. <laughs> let them stack in your inventory, for goodness sake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well. Gosh, there was something. Oh, yeah. One more thing I want to complain about is everything oh, made of wood, like half of everything that ma- uh, made of wood uses regular wood. So I have so much hardwood in my inventory because they all have like the same spawn rates. Despite one of them clearly being more valuable than the others. Yeah. Yep. All right. How about building up the island itself? We start with next to nothing in this game, which is pretty new for the series. And we become the, what is it? Resi- represent, re- resident resident. representative? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So there are several fun tasks to do. I liked how it felt a little more video gamey this time around going back to Nook and getting your next assignment. And most things mm-hmm. would take a day. So it kind of felt like levels in a way. I liked mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I like this game definitely had more progression to it at the beginning than most of the other ones. Like the very first one, actually pretty much all the other ones, you'd get like a couple of tasks that would last you like the first, I don't know, two to three hours of the game. And then after that, it's like, all right, don't let the door hit you on your way out. You're done now. (laughs) Yeah. And that is one thing I do actually kind of like about this game is that it's not a massive time sink. It's like, okay, log in, play for like an hour and then um, leave. But I I think I'm getting ahead of uh, myself. But yeah, um, building up the island, I do like that. I, I, I confess, I've always had a fondness for that sort of uh, bootstrapping a civilization um, theme, starting from nothing and building up. Uh, it's one of the reason I, uh, reasons I like games like Age of Empires, uh, is because you start with very little and you just gradually build up. Um, mm-hmm. I also loved Robinson Crusoe as a kid. So... Um, it's something that very much appeals to me, and it is it is like refreshing where it's like, oh, now I have a vaulting pole, I can get over the the stream and all that. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. How you start out not able to access most of your island, the vaulting mm-hmm. pole helps, and then I was so eager to get that ladder, like I yeah. want to get up there, I want to pull all those weeds. Yeah, for me the ladder was actually kind of anticlimactic because it's like, oh, you, yeah, I guess you'll need a ladder here. And it's just like, really? That's okay. 
Yeah, it was like you need to go pick some flowers. Uh, go go make a ladder. Really? That that's why I'm going up there. And you right. know, there's honestly, I didn't really find a whole lot up there once I got there. So I was just sort of like, uh, I I was expecting this would feel like more of an achievement than it does. It must have been even more anticlimactic for my sister and brother-in-law because I went over to their island and they were a few days behind me in the game and I just made them two ladders and dropped them on the ground. So <laughs> I, I helped them sequence break, I guess. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess another thing in terms of uh, objectives is that uh, I don't really like the fact, and I, I just realized this having the conversation, I don't like the fact that it's very linear in your objectives. Like I kind of... And maybe it's just because I'm not super far in, because I waited like two weeks before I got the game. Mm. Um, but you don't really like. Um, there, there isn't a point so far that I've encountered where Nook says, "Oh, hey, I have a ton of ideas. Pick the ones that you like." Like right now, I have to invite KK Slider to the island. I don't want that freaking beat Nick on my island. What? <laughs> What in the world are you talking about? I, right, Glenn, I got on this island to get away from civilization. If we invite a celebrity here, it's only going to invite draw more attention to the island. <laughs> All right, you better just sell the game. You're you're talking crazy now. <laughs> well, okay, we'll get into this in a second, but I've I've kind of like very lightly been role playing throughout all of this, so. <laughs> and so my my character is at best a crank who wants to be left alone. Okay, nice. Okay, so there's also, of course, upgrading the house, which is an Animal Crossing mechanic as old as time. That was, I'd say, decently fun for me, but a little too easy. I basically flipped two batches of turnips and had as much money as I would ever need. So I just went through, did all the house upgrades back to back really fast. And uh, because I am not a huge collector of items, rugs, and things like that, my house is pretty barren. I have like a room mm -hmm. where I can practice a katana that I have in there. I've got a room that is like roughly music related. And then of course the cat den that I mentioned earlier, but it's just pretty vacant. And I was mostly excited about upgrading the house to get more storage space. So that was my experience, Ryan. Yeah. My, my house is kind of just a hodgepodge of stuff right now. I think it's, you can upgrade your house super fast in this one, it seems like. There's a lot of items you can sell that are worth a decent amount of money. And, yeah, like you said, the turnips can get you money really quickly. So your house upgrades faster than the rate that you can get worthwhile items at. Mm. So your house is going to be pretty barren for a while. Yeah, maybe they should have made them all payable by Nook Miles. Because then you would be gathering more things to earn those right. miles. That was really interesting when the first upgrade was miles and then it switched to bells. So I think it was just kind of to train you on the whole nook miles mm -hmm. part of the yeah, game. Yeah, because at that, that point in the game, it's a lot easier to get nook miles than it is uh, bells. And then it switches. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. it switches. And then bells get to be, you know, wind up being easier to get the nook miles. And then eventually you can start uh, trading nook miles for bells. So. Man, I yeah. wish I could have a, a reward program that just handed me cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw no, that I, I have to said... like get a gift card or whatever, and then I'm you know limited to using whatever products that that. Yeah. Yeah, I saw a meme that said "got out of bed today" and then it had a screenshot of the get miles thing. <laughs> like, yeah, pretty much. That's <laughs> that's sometimes how it feels during quarantine. Uh, how's your house looking, Glenn? And uh, you're talking so about your the... Animal Crossing house. Okay, so my house, I've only upgraded it once. I can afford to pay off the current loan. I just haven't because it... why? <laughs> my storage isn't, I, I think my storage is only, is less than half full and I'm, uh, I have more stuff than I can fit into, or I have less stuff than I can fit into the house. Like the middle of the room is just uh, completely barren. And I have like some corners and stuff, and it looks nice. There are rugs, and I'm I'm trying to put furniture in there. And the Happy Home Association has already given me two A ratings, which I'm a little surprised by because um, I haven't been consciously trying to decorate it really nice. Like I got the little um, placard, and I got bronze. Uh, what is the word? Uh, whatever, bronze metal thing. Yeah. Well, 
I feel like that's an aspect of Animal Crossing that was easier to enjoy as a less jaded, younger person. Because I could suspend my disbelief more that I'm actually making friendships with these animals, that they like the gifts I'm giving them, that the happy home designer is inspecting my house and telling me how I'm doing. But I don't know. At, at this point in my life, it all seems pretty arbitrary, unfortunately. I'm not well, able to, yeah. I, I also don't like, and um, the webcomic Awkward Zombie had a really good comic about this. Uh, but I also don't like the notion of someone comes in and inspects my home. <laughs> uh, so I wake up one morning, it's like, hey, we inspected your home. We think you're doing great. And it's like, I never asked you to judge me. Yeah, you're like, I was asleep com- during that. <laughs> I, I locked the door. How did you? <laughs> like, it's it's really creepy, man. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. Well, good on you for sticking with your role playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it definitely seems, as far as the progression in Animal Crossing New Horizons, that they gamified everything that they could. Yeah, and I do appreciate but, that. There is something weirdly compelling about it. It's like, oh, hey, you know, if I catch two more fish, I get uh, fun bucks. So, yeah. The I will tell you the fishing castmaster one was pretty stressful because I would get to like fifty fish, and then one would get away, and it's like, oh, I just lost all of that progress. But one time I noticed I was at like eighty, and I was like, okay. I gotta ride this through to the end. I'm gonna turn off all distractions. I'm gonna turn the volume up. I'm gonna get close to the screen, make sure I'm not missing any. Ryan, is it compelling to you to get more of those Nook Miles stamps as you go? Yeah, I like doing them. Um, I did notice that fish one for me as just like, I'm just gonna stop paying attention to this. I'm just <laughs> gonna fish. And I ended up getting it that way because nice. otherwise I'll psych myself out too much and they'll just go in for that first dip and then I'll hit the A button. And I'm like, ah! Yeah, I know. There was a really annoying thing when the, during, I mean, the whole Easter event was annoying, but especially for fishing, because you could catch an egg that looked like a fish, and that's one of Simeon's major complaints. He's like, how did that boot that you just catch look like a fo- uh, fish shadow? He's like <laughs> totally critiquing everything and taking it all literally. But yeah. during the Oh gosh, event, speaking of that, I'm upset that I haven't found a second boot, because if you get two boots, you can craft a pair of boots. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Yep. That's and funny. so I haven't gotten the second. I got like a boot my first or second day playing. I haven't gotten that second boot. And I'm angry about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, not angry, just slightly annoyed, but still. It's just. Yeah. I want the boots. <laughs> but during, I want my trash. <laughs> yeah. The Easter event was really just. Bad. Bunny uh, day. Bad. Every, bad, bad. Bunny bad. day. Everything you could craft was ugly. There were even more things to junk up your inventory but especially fish because the guy would you would have that npc who wants to buy your fish or challenge you to catch a certain amount of fish in a row and catching an an egg would ruin that even though the mechanics were the same the shadows looked the same the level of difficulty to catch it was the exact same it, you would it would say you'd have to start over on your on your streak and that was just infuriating and I didn't. I didn't even do that fishing tournament. So. No, I, fishing tournament. I don't. I don't think I was there for that. Yeah, I, I keep like it. people keep saying, "Oh yeah, this villager comes by," and I, I never see them. Like I, I have yet to see the the little turnip pig. Um, even though I play on Sunday? A, Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Okay, I haven't been playing on Sunday morning because before noon. Before noon. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, video games are like drinking. You don't do it before <laughs> before noon. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get crazy bells, just buy some turnips, as many as your money can buy, and then log on to a community, whether that's like a Discord or a Facebook forum or something. And people are always posting their highest bell amounts. And uh, I the two times I did it, I sold for over 500 each time. And uh, Well, there's a... Just- uh, if, if you don't want to do that, if you're antisocial like me, there's actually, apparently there's um, certain patterns that they follow. So if you just yeah. log it for a couple days, someone's made an app that will predict when the best time to sell mm-hmm. is. Right, but you still might not get over 500. You might be in the 200s or something. Yeah, but that's true. Now that people are creating queues and inviting people to their islands to sell high and everything, you can. there's crazy amounts of money to be made. And it's fun because it's one of the fewer social aspects of Animal Crossing and 
people usually ask for tips or they'll tell you if they're missing one certain kind of fruit on their island so you can bring that and give it to them in exchange i've had good experiences with that yeah okay that brings up a, a just question inconsequential question um what red fruit did you all start with cherries orange oranges here too mm -hmm. which is good because i like oranges i think i've gotten cherries in every single animal crossing game i've played i like i wonder if it's related to my birthday that i put in or something i don't know hmm. huh yeah i never really considered that as a possibility if that was an actual thing, don't you think we would know about that, though? Yeah, we probably would. It would be in a But guide. then again, Maybe, Animal Crossing is but... so cryptic. People might know about that, and we don't. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it is, because I haven't always had oranges. Yeah. Has your birthday changed? or? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Changes every year. <laughs> I, I haven't always. I, this is the first time I've had oranges, actually, so. Yeah. But then huh. again, it's, it's been like 15 years. So, of course, there's also yeah. lots of customization. The level of customization this entry of Animal Crossing is the highest it's ever been. They took everything and dialed it up a notch. And that goes down to your character, what you can wear, how you look. Uh, interestingly, you don't pick your gender in this time around. You just make yourself look however you want to look. Uh, furniture, they... You, you kind of do in the end. In the end? Because there's, yeah. there's a body type. There is? I didn't realize that like that had an actual effect on your character model. I thought it was just like kind of a completely arbitrary thing. Oh, maybe it is. Huh. But the, I I know you pick it's, it doesn't say like boy girl male female, but it definitely has well, like here's the blue option uh, and here's the pink interestingly, option. Interestingly, it, it actually hmm. um, in the original Japanese it actually does say or uh, you know pick you know boy or girl. So, that was for this game? Yeah, for this game. Hmm. Yeah, because in this one it just has like it, it shows a picture of a more masculine face and then a more feminine face, and you just pick between the two. So, yeah, so. like, okay, yeah, but you can do that with hair too, and just like mix and match. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I don't think the characters ever like refer to you with any pronouns other than gender neutral second person. I don't know. That, that, now that I think of sure. it, that's that's probably just an English thing because English is a very gender neutral language. Nah, I think that's. Uh, conscious choice from the treehouse this time around because yeah no one that they, they're not gonna call you dude or like hey man or anything like they would in previous games what's up bro exactly yeah <laughs> <laughs> so there's customization actually you you would have jock characters call you bro all the time in previous games <laughs> well one, one of the things I, I the reason I, I bring up english being gender neutral is that in some languages like the second person pronoun you actually is gendered Mm -hmm. So it, it may be something that makes more sense in other regions, but here in, in the you know English speaking world, it, it doesn't really have an effect on the localization. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, of course, there's character customization, furniture. You can get customization kits and change everything's color this time around. That's pretty interesting. And island. Once you get, uh, should we go into the spoilers on how customizing the island works? Yeah, it's been long enough. All right, Glenn. So once you get the hooligan KK slider to come to your island, you actually are going to see the credits roll. And after that, you'll be able to take... Wait, I'm that close to beating the game? Yeah, man. Oh. Well, okay, I may power through it because I'm... I'm I admit, I'm, I'm kind of itching to... <laughs> to... Move on. To check it off my list. <laughs> so... The terraforming, though, it kind of stresses me out because, and, and I'm sorry that I have sounded a little more negative in this episode, but I am struggling with a lot of things when it comes to this game, and one of that is just comparison to everybody on Twitter. It feels like ev mm -hmm. everybody bought this game, and it's true. Pretty much everybody did. It's selling, I think it's only selling slower than Smash Bros. Ultimate and uh, one other switch game but it is up there as Arms. far as yeah that's the one <laughs> <laughs> it's selling extremely fast uh, people are buying switches to play this game for sure and that's what my sister and brother-in-law did so it's getting in a new audience uh, it's one of the most shareable nintendo games which is huge for marketing it's just free word of mouth when everybody's posting these videos and photos of their island 
But with that, I think for me comes comparison where people are time traveling, they're using exploits, they're perfecting their island and, and showing these perfect screenshots that just make me kind of want to give up. Like, I'm never going to be that good. So that's been tough. And I've hardly touched terraforming because it's like, I want to know what I'm doing when I go to do it instead of just yeah. trial and well, error. Well, um, continuing with the theme of online apps, um, there actually is an app that uh, out there that helps you plan out your island. Oh, okay. That might be nice. Just also realize that you're never going to dunk like 300 hours into this game like those people have already with it only being a month old either. I know. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Uh, yeah, but so basically I've... just get an island that's good enough for what you want it to be. Like for me, yeah. I want to I want to like get some streets going where all of the houses are lined up because right now they're kind of scattered about, uh, yeah. and have like a district for the, uh, you know, I have a housing district, I have an orchard, I have a district for the shops and the uh, community buildings, I have the uh, training ground where the uh, uh, my uh, <laughs> militia can um, <laughs> practice their their tactics, and then I have my fortified position where my house is. Uh, up yes. on the top of the mountain so that nobody can get to me. Wow, I like it. Mm-hmm. And of course, you're, you you're not giving anybody a slope to come visit you? Well, I might do that for my own personal convenience, but... Mm-hmm. You still have the high ground. Yeah, I still have the high <laughs> ground. I can see uh, for miles around. Uh, and it's, you know, it, it's one of those things that, you know, just because there's a path leading up to the castle doesn't mean that the castle's easy to take. Yeah. <laughs> One oh, and I, I, I will need to find a stone wall at some point to fortify my position. Yes. Oh, goodness. One thing I might want to try is I saw this really cool idea to get all of your rocks together in one little fenced-in perfect grid. So Good luck. I know. It, I already doable. have two right next to each other, actually. Oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, if you break a rock, it's going to respawn the next day somewhere randomly. But if you block mm-hmm. everywhere except for where you want it to go course that's going to take a lot of items but if you use a fence that negates the eight tiles around it so it's the most efficient Ah. way to cover up your island and yeah you can try to get everything but you have to actually plan very strategically where this fence of rocks is going to go because the game is actually divided into a grid just like animal crossing on gamecube was except it's an invisible grid well can't you see it with the map because i know the map has a grid yeah, it, I guess it's, that's true. Just the screen won't ever scroll. But only three rocks can be in a grid. So if you want all six next to each other, you have to actually straddle that line and find out exactly where it is. So mm. uh, it's like, uh, it, that would be so much work, but it'd be very nice to go rock farming all in one location. Rock farming in your rock garden? That's right. <laughs> so, Ryan, are there any aspects of customization that you're really leaning into? Um, I really like the added wardrobe so you can just like throw everything into your storage in your house and then walk up to the wardrobe and when you want to change your clothes you can kind of like try stuff on and whatnot before instead of just going in trying it on packing out of the menu looking at your guy going back into said menu change like it was very cumbersome before um, I guess just the added storage in your house in general has done wonders for customization yeah. and the the opening up to the island customization is huge too. Yeah. And the uh, the option to apply patterns to the face, I originally didn't really think much of it, but then I started seeing uh, what some other people were doing with it. And it's like, oh, okay, I, I don't necessarily have to do this to like draw stars and tigers on my face or whatever. I mm-hmm. can use this to like give myself eyebrows or uh, what I did is I gave my character a little scar on one cheek. <laughs> of course. <laughs> the people with that make like a blood splattered shirt and then have blood splatter on their face. Oh yeah, I, I love that. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've considered doing that for my character. Why not? <laughs> well, it's. I, I don't want to spoil anything. I'm going to be writing an article about his adventures, but. <laughs> oh, cool! Kind Striking of... fear into the hearts of your fellow <laughs> islanders. <laughs> so, Glenn, have you gone online at all? Uh, I mean, I've gone online to look up, like, when is the time to find a snapping turtle, but I haven't used the online functionality within the game, no. Do you plan to? I mean, if y'all want to meet up or something, the thing is, it looks 
kind of basic. You just run around in circles and uh, use emotes and chat functions and then yeah it's not really yep. it, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot there it's kind of like just a messaging board with a 3d exploration component to it I yeah i mean it's it's not anything extra it's basically you can check out your friends islands plus you can do things that you would normally do with other people so you can get together and like fish and then you can use like the the voice app the Nintendo voice app thing so you can talk to each other and whatnot while you're fishing. So mm -hmm. it makes, I mean, if you're just going around just to catch fish, that way you don't sit there by yourself for an hour doing that. You can actually socialize while you're doing it. Okay. Yeah, it's especially nice if it's raining at one person's island, then that's where you go and it's better fishing too. Yeah, I've mm -hmm. only had it rain one time the entire time I've played. It's rare. Oh, wow. Yeah. Which is, is kind of, well, again, I don't play every day, but I, I found that kind of... Uh, kind of upsetting because i actually really like rain just in real life and video games just in general mm -hmm. i've had fun with the multiplayer it is nice it's really cool to see your island ryan and exchange fruit and whatnot but i think glenn's right that it is pretty basic you do run out of things fairly soon to do unless you want to do like a big fishing session or something like that there, mm -hmm. there's not a whole lot of like gameplay to do with each other but uh I mean, Animal Crossing is best in short spurts, and that doesn't change with online. You can get creative, and I've seen people playing tag or hide-and-seek, that kind of thing, with multiple people on their island. So if you invent your own games and, and kind of take that into the experience with you, it can be fun. And actually, once you get the second shop upgrade, you can buy a timer, which is basically a stopwatch. So you can use that for games and stuff that you make up, too. Oh, really? Because I know they used, they used to do, like, people would do hide-and-seek online and stuff all the time where it's like, all right, five minutes on the clock. You have five minutes to find everybody. Yeah. Huh. And the, the timer shows up. I'm, I think I haven't checked it because I just got the second shop upgrade, but it used to be it showed up on everybody's screen and would actually have, like, a countdown in, like, the last 10 seconds and whatnot. Oh, that's cool. But the online functionality does need some fixes, it is, again, famous Nintendo for delivering a subpar experience, especially when you're having multiple people come to your island at once. So let's say you have good turnip prices and you want to share your Dodo code with an online group. You're going to get people lining up and running through your island like it's Black Friday. And every single time someone comes in on the plane, it halts everybody. Everybody has to get out of whatever menu they're doing. Uh, you have to watch kind of the ticker thing with the plane coming in, landing, and introduces the person each time so i've gone to sell turnips where i can only walk like two steps and then it happens again someone comes and then someone leaves and i walk two more steps and someone comes so it's very stop and go and i mm. wish that it was just more smooth and in the background yeah yeah That's it, probably it honestly bad. i think it'd be a lot cooler just if the plane just like flew overhead and you went oh hey that's there's a plane now. I guess someone's coming because you know that's kind of what it's like in real life. You just see a plane, and you're like, "Huh, weird," and you move on. Yeah. The only I don't think it will ever change, only because every time it does that, it's basically saving the island as is, and then it needs to download that to the other person's console. Ugh. So even if someone's coming in, like if you pick a fruit, it's going to change that tree. So they need to like halt everything where it is because they want it to be preserved. Like, all right, this tree isn't picked a fruit yet when this person comes in it's exactly the same okay, or if so... it wasn't it would download it they would be on like a 30 second delay so you could be like all right quick do all this junk in 30 seconds and then it's going to be reset for this person i don't know i i hear you and i'm sure that is their reason but at the same time think about a game like fortnite or something that you're changing the island you're breaking things mm -hmm. and it has to be the same on everybody's screen in real time and they pull it off so yeah, that's true. Yeah, but know. you also always start with the same start state because everyone that uh, the bus loads for the same time at the same time for everyone. So yeah, I'm sure that's maybe fact, maybe it's sure. just that getting that initial um, sync up is is crucial. I don't know. It still sounds stupid, like to force people to stop every time. But mm -hmm. if you were gonna do multiple people, like intentionally, mm -hmm. you should be able to do like join a queue and like open your island up but not allow people and so people can get in a queue yep and then be like all right now my gates are fully open and everybody comes in at once absolutely because then it won't stop it a hundred times yeah i hope they update it for now their updates haven't really touched on any 
uh, streamlining or things like that. It's more of just content. And it's kind of interesting how they've locked the seasonal events and holidays behind updates, which means that time travelers, which we'll touch on in a bit, they're not able to go experience Christmas right now or anything like that, which is... It, it's nice. It doesn't spoil it for everybody. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, but at the same time, it does, like, is this one of those things that you can't go back in time and re-experience it? Because I, it, it does leave me, uh, I am a little bit concerned, like, does that mean that we're, once Nintendo stops supporting this game, that holidays just cease to exist? Nah, I'm sure, like, at, after some point, they're just going to say, all right, it's not locked behind a time gate anymore. <laughs> you, would, you would think that, right? <laughs> I, I, bet, I bet you for the first year it's going to be like this, and then once we get maybe to the first anniversary, after that they'll just be like, all right, now it's just on a set rotation. Okay, yeah, that actually would make sense. Hopefully they'll separate the cherry blossoms from egg day and shorten egg day to a day instead of 12. That, that, that just happened to be unfortunate where that's where Easter was this year because it still follows the same date is easter that's true easter changes depending on the lunar cycle so it was just like an unfortunate fate for that holiday yeah one time i made an excel spreadsheet to figure out like what day of the week each holiday was going to be on and things like that and most of the holidays are pretty easy like of course christmas is always on the same day of the month but then there's Mm -hmm. other ones that are like the third monday and whatnot okay you can figure that out Mm -hmm. with the formula but then I got to Eastern, I'm like, what? This has to do with the moon? And I had to put in yeah. like a math equation about the, the where the moon was in the galaxy. I'm like, <laughs> holy cow. What if we just simplified this, guys? Mm-hmm. One of Animal Crossing's most famous mechanics is real time. That's I remember what the back of the GameCube box said. It said, the game keeps playing without you. And I was like, whoa, I got to get this for my sister, a.k.a. myself. But that has continued to this day. There wow, certain... that, that sounds like you maybe should see a therapist if you think you're your own sister. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? Is it fun that these there are certain things only available at certain times? I know that's frustrated you with your snapping turtle, Glenn, but uh, overall, are you for it? Or do you yourself time travel or at least sympathize with the people that do? I mean, I can definitely sympathize with the people who do because I'm very, as I've said, probably nearing 100 times now on the podcast, I'm a very goal-oriented person, so I can definitely understand wanting to like rush through it as quickly as possible. Me personally, um, I can definitely see why some people see it as unnecessary padding, but I don't really mind it and I, i'm surprised at how little i mind it because it's uh because there's really only so much worth doing each day and then it kind of spaces it out and it's like okay you have to wait till tomorrow to um to get your package in the mail or whatever it's just like oh hey i'm done now i can go play something else for the for the rest of the day or uh read, read a magazine or whatever right yeah, I like the I like the real time. Uh, the only time I really don't like it is that like right when I start the game because that's obviously when you're most into a game. And the beginning of this one seems very slow. Like when they gate off the certain parts of the island, it's like all right, I want to catch some ocean fish, but only a certain amount of ocean fish spawn at a time, mm-hmm. and I'm only gated to this very small portion of ocean. Yeah, <laughs> so. That, that part of it, I mean, it, it didn't last long. It was only like a day or two before you could explore further. But uh, I, overall, I like the real time. It gives you something to look forward to. Um, when shops are closed for a full day, it, it's, it's just more anticipation for the following day when it's going to open up and see what everything's going to look like, how it's going to change. Yeah, for sure. I, I agree. I like it most of the time. I wish that some of the timed availability stuff wasn't quite so rare or hard to get of course going back to the string fish i just wish Mm -hmm. that that wouldn't have felt like such a chore and such a disappointment when it didn't happen like if i'm really trying to catch a string fish and devoting two three hours to it i feel like i should be able to maybe by crafting a certain kind of bait or i don't know just i feel like they that time sensitive thing should be used to make things exciting make it so you can look forward to things 
not make it frustrating, which it can be sometimes. Mm-hmm. I, not a hundred percent sure on this, but I feel like in previous games there were different times where certain fish and bugs would come out. Mm-hmm. Like there'd be like six p.m. this bug starts, seven p.m. this fish comes out. I think in this one it's just like nine a.m. to a certain time, and then nine p.m. to a certain time. Gotcha. It's not as it's, it's like a day and night cycle. It's not yeah. It's not mm-hmm. as spread out. Well, okay, one of cool. the things I found interesting, uh, similar to that, is that there's certain varieties of butterfly where there's like a gap for two months in its availability. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually, it took me a, a second to figure out why that would be, but I actually like that because what it's saying is that they're migrating in one direction, and then you know they've completely migrated out of your area of the hemisphere and then they come back for a short period of time as they're heading south and i thought that was um that was a nice little attention to detail yeah mm-hmm. and of course if i really wanted to try to catch that fish again i could maybe try to find someone in the southern hemisphere to go visit yeah and I guess that's, that's always an option yeah all right well one of the thing i would like to praise this game for is how they've stepped up their game on the presentation and just as far as the graphics but even more specific than that, the user interface. I think that Nintendo did an outstanding job, The especially when it comes to the Nook phone, all the little animations and just the flat design that they did on that is incredible. I feel like it would make any modern app developer jealous of how good of a job they did designing that and just how fun it is. And I think that mm-hmm. really lends itself to the gamification. Getting Nook Miles is fun, especially not just because of what you do to get them or what you can do with them, but how it looks when the little raccoon runs around the world and the sound effect that it makes and how it's timed perfectly with the graphics. So hats off to whoever helped with the design on this. Yeah, that, that is Absolutely. a very satisfying little... Oh, gosh, I said satisfying. Um, is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just... I resent the fact that people keep saying, uh, you know, this is this video is full of satisfying stuff, and... Like, I've watched a few of those, and oftentimes they actually make me really anxious. <laughs> well, far be it from you to jump on any bandwagon. <laughs> but, so you think it's satisfying? Yeah, I think it, um, it, it does, you know, it like the timing and stuff, it doesn't go on for too long, unlike a lot of other things in this game. <laughs> like the the dialogue uh oh gosh like it's like hey blathers can you tell me about this because you know i'm the kind of guy it's like i want my money's worth if i'm going to donate something i want to hear what blathers has to say about it. and then he has like four <laughs> whole text boxes uh, two appending each end that you can barely skip through right like you can increase the speed by like 25 percent or something uh ridiculous that's a yeah that's an Animal Crossing problem. There's a lot of dialogue that should be a, I get this the first time, and after this, you don't say this to me anymore. Yes. That's the Skyward Sword rupee issue. Yeah, well, Maybe the rupee you... issue only happened, if I recall correctly, only happens immediately after um, turning, uh, starting your game and then for the rest of your playthrough. Though I may be getting that mixed up with um, uh, Twilight Princess. Isn't it funny, though, that there's an owl that talks your ear off? It just kind of brings me back to Ocarina of Time. It's like, if you're not careful, <laughs> he will tell you something you do not want to sit around and listen to. Well, at mm-hmm. least Kapora Gabora um, had, like, really good theme music. Right. Yeah, so I'm a fan of the graphics, for sure. The wind in the trees, just what the ocean looks like, rolling mm-hmm. in and running, rolling out. Sunset, sunrise, mm-hmm. both of those look really good. Yeah. Any other graphics things stand out to you, too? Um, you know, honestly, I'm, I haven't been super impressed by the graphics. Everyone's like, oh, man, this game looks so beautiful. And I look at it, it's like, yeah, it's on par with Nintendo's other Switch offerings. Yeah, you know, I remember if you, comp- if you compare it to the previous Animal Crossings, though, like the step up in graphics is. Well, huge, I would expect this is the that first from HD the HD f- one. What, what about uh, Amiibo Festival? Huh? That was an HD. <laughs> yeah, but that's a paperweight. That's not a game. <laughs> uh, Ryan, I don't know what you're talking about. How, why would you use a disc as a paperweight? They're not that much. They, they don't weigh that much. Uh, a paperweight. You know what the Amiibo no, that came with it. Ryan, okay, what you do with a disc that you don't want anymore is you use it as a coaster. We've known this oh, since okay. the 90s. <laughs> 
A paperweight has to have some has to has to have weight. (laughs) A coaster disc and a paperweight amiibo, all for five dollars. What a steal! (laughs) Yep. Right. I will say. Are they selling it for five dollars? Festival when it came out. Mm -hmm. Oh, less than that. You can get it for like a buck. Oh man. Um, Because there were so many of them made. I bought a amiibo festival when it came out, and I was like, man, this is really basic, and I didn't play it basically since like the i owned it for like five days maybe played it for five days and then it's just been in the shelf since and then about a month before this game came out i was kind of like oh yeah that game maybe my kids will like it because it was like a mario party without mini games mm-hmm. so it's just watching the characters and whatnot so it's a, they like, like mario the characters party but they weren't the cool even stuff. any interested in the game at all because there is no game you literally put the amiibo on top of the wii u gamepad that's used to roll the dice. Like, you can't hit a button to roll the dice for your character. Every wow. time, you have to put your amiibo over top of the thing and lift it up, and then the dice You throws. should use the touchscreen to pick wow. up the dice and fling them. You can't. Yeah, I'm just saying, that would have been a cool use for oh, the touchscreen. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, you. everything you do in this, you have to use your amiibo for. Man. I've, it's obnoxious. I've critiqued New Horizons a fair amount here, but they sure bounce back after the low points of... The spinoffs, and then also the mobile game, which left a lot to be desired. So I'm glad that... Honestly, though, I will say that at least Happy Home Designer and the... I'm blanking on what the mobile Pocket game camp, was called at this point. Pocket Camp, there you go. Um, they used a lot of things from that to help improve this game. Right. So I will give them that. Like The Happy Home Designer made the designing so, so much better. Um, you could like finally hang things on walls and that's where they would have the grid where you could lay stuff in your house, but it would only could, it could only be in space one or space two. It couldn't be in space one and a half. Yep. Like that allowed you to do that. Just, yeah, that, that was a necessary evil just to, for them to develop that stuff and then import it into this game. So when you go into your house and you hit the D pad to go into the editor, that's pretty much happy home designer, right? Yes. Awesome. Yeah, and I do appreciate that feature, if nothing else, because it makes it really easy to put stuff on shelves and the like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Glenn, mm-hmm. give me a fun fact about the music. I know you've been paying attention. Not particularly, no. <laughs> There's no, not really. Right. Um, so I only recently got like the hourly music because I only like last. T- I think the last time I played was the first time I had the actual town hall. But um, mm-hmm. some of the music's good. I remember liking the. Uh, I want to say it was the Bunny Day music, but for the most part, um, the music has not left much of an impression on me. Yeah, um, it's it's very ambient. It's just kind of this quiet, mellow stuff. And eh. okay, how about you? Which Ryan? is weird because I remember Animal Crossing for like the GameCube actually having a nice kind of laid back soundtrack. It was laid back and like jovial, happy go lucky. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, I did like that the music changed once you got the town hall upgrade. I like that before that, it was kind of more like ambient, almost Minecraft type music. And then once you got your town hall, it did get more into that original like Animal Crossing style. I just don't think that the actual hourly music is as good as some of the previous games. Yeah. It was a really nice touch that it actually changed once you got the town hall. It's like, oh, like the progression in this is really cool. Like it's mm. not just, oh, I got this one building. Like multiple things will change because you've your island is getting bigger and better. Yep. Yeah, and that is a cool feature. I will admit that. Um, I will say, I think probably the museum music's the one that I, I remember the most. Um, mm-hmm. Just off the top of my head, because. Um, I don't know, there is something, like, especially as you're going through the fossil section, and I know you won't know this, Scott, because, uh, first of all, you haven't been there yet, and secondly, you listen to podcasts when you play video games instead of enjoying them for the art that they are. Um, mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, yeah, there, there podcast, is something kind of kind of eerie about the music, and I, I do appreciate that. Hmm. As a podcast producer and editor, I would think that you'd be happy that there's people out there listening but okay all right well you know <laughs> listen to the podcast when you're not doing when you're doing something not yeah. important like when you're, you're sitting you're at, at work. staring at the ceiling uh-huh. <laughs> no no when you're at work or you know writing uh well no actually i wouldn't suggest um listening to a podcast while you're writing because the language processing center of your brain's being occupied by uh, 
that. But, you know, if you're drawing or whatever, you know, there's a lot of stuff you can do while listening to a podcast. Just, you know, video games, not, I I would not recommend that. Unless you're like level grinding or something really boring and then. Hey, well, Animal Crossing is a grind. You know what? Actually, you're right. I, I will cut you slack if you listen to a podcast. While you're <laughs> Animal playing. Crossing is probably a game you could listen to a podcast. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, this that that whole tangent. I'm unless, sorry that that was mis that that was misguided in the current context. Unless you're fishing. Yeah, you know something like yeah, that that requires devotion. <laughs> well, don't don't the doesn't the rumble trigger when you're uh, yeah yeah yeah, but that can deceive you. Because it gives you a little rumble still whenever they just nibble at it. Well, so there's it a little still... sound when they nibble at it too, so. <laughs> yeah, honestly, when I go fishing, whenever I throw my fishing pole out and I see the fish start coming at it, I shut my eyes and I just go purely by sound and I catch way more fish that way than if I'm like staring at the fish because then I'm like, oh, uh, hit the A button. Hey, pro tips. That one's free, listeners. Yep. It, like, honestly, just turn the sound up slightly while you're fishing because when you're close to the ocean edge, it actually mutes more of the background sound and you get more of the ocean noise. Mm, nice. Okay, well, the last thing we want to dissect is the writing, which is, of course, a huge part of Animal Crossing. This ge- These games take forever to localize, I'm sure, a huge portion of the delay that we experienced with New Horizons release was just giving the treehouse more time to convert puns to English and things like that. So... I think for the most part they did a good job. I know we've already mentioned that it can get repetitive reading the same joke over and over again. The jokes mm-hmm. are solid. I like uh, catching an anchovy, telling it stay away from my pizza. It's good. <laughs> Some of them are misses, like the sea bass one. Yeah, I don't understand. I don't understand what that's even referencing. Well, great. It's because it's a sea bass. So it's saying it's a C plus. It's basically because sea bass is like the most hated fish, basically, because since the first Animal Crossing, that was the most common fish that you would catch when you're okay. Ocean it's fishing. inside baseball. Gotcha. Yeah. I. Uh, it's also. So it's basically saying it's not as bad as you think. It's at least a C plus. Like it's, <laughs> I, I just looked at it, it's like bass, like base. I could see maybe saying a C sharp, uh, you know, like. <laughs> Uh, but no, it, it's like, okay, that, that's one of those jokes where it's just kind of tenuous, the, the mm-hmm. logical connection or the, like the, yeah. They, they could have swapped it out for a better one. They could have spent another half hour on it and came up with something that would make more people yeah. laugh. But okay. What about writing in general? How do you think they did? Um, uh, well, some, oh, go ahead. one other thing about the fish that I found interesting is almost all of them have one pun to go along with every single time you catch them. Yeah. But the squid, I believe there's three, maybe four, and they're all Splatoon puns. Wow. No, one of them is, uh, why doesn't it bloop? Oh, okay. That's, that's right. A, that's a Mario joke. Then, then the rest of them were Splatoon puns mm-hmm. about like, this is off the hook, which is, yeah. And I, there's, there's another one or two that are Splatoon references. And I was like, all right, that's kind of funny. That is awesome. But, Nintendo um, crossovers, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, Animal Crossing has always had references to other Nintendo games in it. Uh, if not Nintendo games in it. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a feature that <laughs> Very true. Back. And then they're like, wait a minute, we can sell these for real money. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure the GameCube game adds actual value still just for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. Like, the humor, I don't think it's... How do I just... I, I have this theory about humor that there are certain jokes that you tell not because you're expecting to get a laugh necessarily out of it, but you're trying to uh, establish a tone. Mm -hmm. I think that's really what the jokes here do. None of them I honestly thought were particularly funny, um, but they do establish kind of a lighthearted tone. Yeah. Right. They're all dad jokes. (laughs) Yeah, well, as someone who likes lame puns, um, <laughs> they're they're lame by my standards. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Uh, yeah, that, it's it's always been like that though. Animal Crossing is just all about the lame puns, where it's you you roll your eyes at it and you're like, oh, Animal Crossing. Well, it doesn't even get that much of a reaction out of me. It's just sort of like, okay. Yeah. Hmm. All right, Glenn. In the outline, it looks like you used one of your big boy college words in here. What are you getting at? Uh, <laughs> uh, I I think the game's a little bit saccharine. 
which means excessively sweet. Why do you feel that way? Don't bring Sakurai into this. <laughs> yeah. He had nothing to do with Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, see that's how you make it that's how you do a pun um so uh everyone's just like in the original animal crossing this is something i've heard a lot of longtime fans say is that people were kind of mean in that like you know you get stung by bean, bees and I almost said stung stung by beans <laughs> what's wrong with your face yeah they're like what's wrong with your face you know now they're like genuinely concerned and they can actually teach you how to make medicine if you do that so get stung talk to someone they'll teach you how to make medicine um, but, uh, I don't, I don't know, like, it's, it's almost, everyone's really cheery, and they're, they immediately treat you like friends, and I, I seem to recall it was more like an initial curiosity, it's like, oh, you're new in town, instead of like, oh, you're my new best friend, <laughs> and I, I don't know, I, I don't, I'm someone who, I, I like a little bit of bite, not necessarily even like a, just this pervasive mean-spiritedness, just like, Real life people get will rib you a little bit, you know, when something silly happens or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, it's hard to form a militia when people are just complimenting you, right? Yeah, yeah. That uh, that hamster is basic training is going to eat him alive. <laughs> if the elephant doesn't. Yeah, if the elephant doesn't. <laughs> well, uh, probably the elephant like is going to eat him during wilderness survival training. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be like, why did you eat private? What's his name? I I, for, I forget. Um, <laughs> what? what? <laughs> you can see town right over there. You know you're not in actual danger. The island's not that big. You just have to learn to swim across the river. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Glenn, what's your plan? You want to see it through to the credits and then move on? I'm I'm definitely going to put more time into it. Like. I want to make the islands, um, I, I want to get the terraforming and all of that and like move the buildings into the proper places, which is going to take time and that's going to take money. Um, after that, I may sell it. All right. And this, this that would be the first Switch game I actually ever sell because it, it's, I don't know, like a part of me likes it and a part of me is just completely indifferent. Hmm. Yeah, I hear that. Ryan, has this changed your gaming habits? Um, a little bit. I like I played it a lot right away, and it would definitely be something like right. I would wake up early before my kids got up to play it in the morning every day for the first like three weeks ish. And since then, I still make time for it every day, but I'm like going back into my normal routine with Animal Crossing a little bit thrown in. It's not as mm -hmm. much playtime. I see. But that's how all of them get. Once you get to a certain point, there's not as much to do every day anymore. So mm -hmm. you can really min max this one if you want to, though. Like that rock garden thing we talked about. I mean, there's people are playing this like an MMO. It's weird. Yeah, I think I can't do that. I can't either. <laughs> no, I feel myself winding down on it a little bit. Uh, honestly, the kind of critterpedia for your smartphone that you talked about. Uh, I might try that out, see if I can get all the April stuff. That might draw me back in a little bit, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm glad that they put the credits in there with KK and that I can consider this game beaten. And if I want to move on soon, just focus on more of my backlog, which is going pretty well, uh, except for people keep giving away free games for uh, self-quarantine, and that's making my backlog bigger. But um, yeah, yeah, if I want to move on soon, I think I'll feel content with what I got out of this game. Now, mm -hmm. didn't the creds play for KK in the original too? You just go there on a Saturday and yeah, yeah. Every time he comes after that, the credits play too. Yeah, that's how you speed run the game. By the way, is you just you start you play on a Saturday at like eight o'clock, and then you just <laughs> run up and talk to KK as soon as everything with Nick is done. And it's like you won the game. You didn't even have to pay off your house. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. Well, that's Animal Crossing: New Horizons. Thank you so much for. Coming on here, talking about this huge Nintendo game, we actually don't know what the company has for us next, which is a weird feeling. Are there? Yep. No, it's wrong. not a weird feeling. It's just these last few years have been so jam-packed that we forgot what it's like to live during uh, the Wii U era. How quickly yeah. we forget. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Man, we need a big Nintendo Direct soon. I'm sure that whatever they were planning for E3 will make its way to the internet uh, without E3 time. I mean, they're practically doing their own thing Anyway, before 
to well, shut down. It's rumored that uh, new Paper Mario is going to hit the Switch, but I have no hopes for it because <laughs> even if it does, chances are it won't be the RPG one I want. So yeah. If I if I get it, I'll be happy, but I'm not getting my hopes up at all. Yeah. I'm I'm really curious cuz they have I think they did say that they're done with the uh, the Sticker Star um, color splash style, which um you know, I think that was there, there were good ideas there, but it was really half baked. But, mm-hmm. um, and I've been being also to do the it. Mario and Luigi series is gone now, yeah. Too, so they don't oh, have gosh. like a like that's yeah, like along, losing a friend, along with the developing studio. That was rough, yep. Yeah, I, right, I, I meant to do like an article on that or something, but yeah, Glenn, where should people go after this episode ends? Um, I don't know, I'm not your dad. <laughs> read, read your blog. Sure, if you want. Slash blog. <laughs> All right. Depends on whether or not you're allowed to leave the house, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to plug, Ryan? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I've got another podcast coming out, but it's not quite ready yet, so Ooh. I might plug that next time. For now, you can search for my book, Spire of Tyranny, on Amazon. Get yourself something to read during quarantine. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. See ya.